Excuse me, Mr. Speaker. He Where said, are you from? He said from London. London. You're from yes, London. Yes, Master Allah is from London. How old are you? How old are you, Ayman? How old, How old are you? How old? How old? How, old? How many years are you? Yes, this place. Yes. Why do you speak English, Allah? You speak English. You don't speak English. English for me. I'm speaking English. No. Yeah. No. What, what, what do you mean, no? no. I'm speaking. Yes, I am. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. I, and what language am I speaking then? No. No. What language is that? Chinese? Ah! I'm going. Fair enough. I'm going to have to take a look at where you are. At this one point, no. This one point, this one point I don't know. I believe that my faith is based on, on hard evidence. I believe that it's based on my own logic, my own understanding. Yeah. It's not a blind faith. Because right. I don't think that's a faith at all. I it's your mind. A, it's a, your a mind. A myth. A myth. Yeah. It's your mind. I have. Yeah. It's your mind. See? No, but if you're saying it is based on logic and understanding, huh? uh, and, and you. I don't interest. understand really. Yeah. But I mean, the fundamental, the core of it, the concept of the Trinity, <laughs> I mean, is something which uh, Christian theologians. Having tried to explain it, gave up and said it's, it's a divine mystery. So this is the very core of the religion, you know. So to talk about logic and, 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 and rationalism after your very fundamental concept, you know, is irrational. It's irrational in the sense that you know, three when you add three things together, you don't get one; you get three. So this is the fundamental irrationality that you accept by faith. You yeah. accept by faith. And you accept it by faith, that's another thing. That's nothing that can be argued. But you know, when we were talking before about you know Jesus dying, the concept of, of God dying, I mean, is in itself something irrational. Because when we say when we use the term God, as God has always been understood by Jesus and by those prophets who came before him was one who has no beginning or end. So to speak of God dying, meaning coming to an end, is something irrational. It goes against the very concept of God. But I have to go back to the same point. When you die, and when I die, is that the end? Okay, but then why are you playing the same logic to God? No, what you're saying, when we, when we you're die... Saying, you're saying if God dies in the body, that he has ended. Well, dying doesn't mean you cease to exist. Dying means your body dies. I mean, I believe that was so. No, but the body of Jesus... Was the body of Jesus God? No, I believe he was God. No, but was his body God, or it's just the spirit that was God? Was Jesus' body God also, or is it only his spirit that was God? I believe he came down to us in, in the form of a man. Okay. Still when he came to so the form, was that form which was in a body, was that God? The body. Well, I believe he was God. Is God. So the body was God. Not, not the body itself. This is the problem. That's the problem. See? This is where you're, you're jammed because of the fact that in the text it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it goes on to say, and the Word became flesh. This is according to John. The Word became flesh. So it meant that the body was God. 
Yes, that's what that means. But because of the, pro the problem which exists intellectually right now for you, you want to make that separation. And this has led in the church history to, to major upheavals, major breaks between Eastern Christianity, Western Christianity over the same issue of was was Jesus God in the in the body and the and the spirit. The spirit? Well, he, he could have saved himself from, from the Romans, but he chose not to because he wanted to save us. Yeah, because um, God is not that. God is up in the sky. He'll never die and will never end. And he'll never start up. I believe in that. I don't believe all these things. And God said, Talk is hard for us and for us Christians, but we are eating it. There's a worm in that in that pig which, kill, which kills people, makes idols. That's why all English people are ill. None of them are right. That's what I do. Look at my Anyway, but, but I want to get back to the point. I don't understand why you can't believe. So you're saying you're, you're kind of pinpointed me when you said. God is his body. Jesus was God. Uh, his body was God. But meaning, still, meaning, but still, all God, complete God, or was God, you know, infused within a part of his creation, meaning that the body was creation, created, but then God, the soul, filled that body and then moved around. So when the body died, it was the body dying and not God. That's, you know, I can, I I can accept that one. So this, no, is where you, this is where it seems that you're coming from. Let me tell you something. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you have a new Christian say, there's a lot of things I don't understand. I mean, there's things about Christian, I mean, about life about God that I don't understand. In some ways I'm glad that it's so because if he's such a small God and I can understand everything there is to know about him, I have a real problem. That's not the kind of God, that's not God to me. You know, it's not right. And so in some ways there's things I don't. I can understand the Trinity. I can understand three persons from God. I can understand relationships. I can understand the relationship between a father and a son. That is something I can understand. I can understand that God, a loving God, needs, not needs, God, a loving God, will, uh, uh, will, will, um, exist, exist is not the right word either, but I can say, will be, maybe that's right, will be, because he's always been, right, uh, represented or exist in three persons, because he's a God of relationship. I don't believe he's a, a distant God, he's a God who is here. But do you believe that God is here? <coughs> Certainly. Okay. I mean, this is one of the basic characteristics of God, is that he's unique. He is not like he is the thing that he creates. The things that he creates, they share these common attributes. But God is unique. So when you speak about God being having parts, in fact. You see, then you are making no. God like His creation. Yes, we have aspects of our creation is like that. We have steam and ice and we have water. We have the tree with its branches and its roots and its trunk. This is this God's creation. But the only unique being is God. And, and, and He is not in the form of His creation. You, what you're doing when you're trying to say that He has His personality, you can understand it. You can understand it. Why? Because yes, it exists among, amongst us. We are divisible. We have parts. We have aspects. You know, we have an emotional being. We have a, an intellectual being. We have a spiritual being. These, this is, these are human characteristics. This is the characteristics of His creation. This is not God. God is unique. He is God in the fullest sense. And one of the part of that uniqueness is not being of multiple personalities. We put people away in the hospital because of their multiple personalities. We say they're sick. People have this is considered sickness, multiple personalities. Human beings have that. This is not God. God is one God. The same one God who Jesus worshipped. Who Jesus worshipped, who he fell down on his face. 
in the Garden of Gethsemane, falling down on his face in worship of that God. The same God who Abraham and Moses fell down on their faces and worshipped. One God. We should be worshipped, I agree. God is, is Almighty. But uh, I have this question for you. I mean, do you believe you have a relationship, some sort of relationship with God? Yes. With, with God? Okay, now, how... How is this relationship? I mean, is your only relationship to him that you you obey his commands and you serve him? He's he's your, your master, you're his slave, and you're just obeying his commands. That's the only relationship. You know, I turn to him in my time of need. I call on him. I try to remember him, to guide me, to, to be aware of him, that the fact that he's that he's looking over me, he's aware of what I'm doing, to help to guide me aright. I seek his grace. I know that it's only by his grace that I can uh, attain salvation from this life. No, but I have a personal relationship. But I have this question too. How 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 would you would you, how is what is your concept of love in terms of a person loving another person? I mean, if you love somebody, will you spend time to be with them? Will you not? Will you go to be with them? I mean, say for instance, you have a daughter, this little girl, she just came a few minutes ago. You love this stuff. You will go down to her and you will spend time with her. You will play with her. You will talk to her. You will, you will, go, you will take the initiative as a father, maybe you're her father. You take the initiative to go down. The little girl, well, the little girl may come to you, but if she doesn't, I'll tell you what, you're going to go get her, aren't you? Are you just going to let her go? She wandered off? No, because you're the father. You go get her. And I have this question. In Islam, I believe you have the only way that you believe that, that God has come to you is through the Quran. Is that right? through, the, uh, through the Quran and through the Hadith and through the, the Quranic, through the, the, the teachings of Islam. Is that correct? Is that the only way that God has come to you? Is just through the, the books? What do you mean, come to you? Well, I, I'm just thinking, how did he come to you? I mean, how did God reveal Himself to okay, he, human beings? So they, he revealed Himself to human beings through the prophets. Okay, through the prophets. Okay. But I have this in my mind. Is, is that through the prophets? All of the prophets. You, that you know as, as a man or as a father, the way you would treat, treat a daughter, the way you love her, the way you would chase her if she was running away, you would not wait for her to come to you if she was going to get hurt. You would go down and get hurt. Or even if she did something wrong. This little girl you love, maybe this little girl accidentally did something wrong and hurt somebody else, you would even go pay the person that they, that your little girl hurt because you want your little daughter back to you, right? You might do that. That's a love. That is love. I believe God is a God of love and I think He's given more than just the Quranic teaching and, and the last prophet. But it's not, it's not just that. Uh, it's also stated in the Quran that when God created Adam, the time of the creation of Adam, all of that creation, all of the human beings who exist in this world were created at the same time in the spiritual form. And they were made aware that God was their Lord. So it is, the revelation is, is a reaffirmation of that consciousness. So every human being was born as a part of as a part of his nature, a consciousness of God. You know, the society may deviate that individual or whatever, but that is there. Also God sends signs to every human being throughout his life. Throughout his or her life. You know? So it's not that the person is left alone, that it's only okay if you open the Quran or this or you open the scripture that you're going to uh, see the signs of God. No. The signs of God are all around us. They're in within ourselves. When we reflect in our in our sleep, in our our dreams. How many times people have dreams which which bring them into some kind of a, a sense of, of reflection and, 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 and search for the truth because it came in a dream. Where did that come from? So the issue of God, you know, leaving human beings, you don't look at God as having left human beings. But to now look at to try to compare again, you know, when we talk about God being unique. Unique is unique in the fullest sense. That you do not compare God in his relationship to his creation to you in the relationship to your daughter. Where you, yes, you have to go to your daughter because that's the only way. You cannot come in her dreams. You can
cannot reveal yourself to her in your, your dreams. God can. You see, so, so I'm saying that you cannot put that as a part of her psyche. There's so much, so many limitations that you have. So you are forced to come to her. Whereas God doesn't have to become one of us to come to us. But you know what? I want to come to my daughter. I love my daughter. I want to come. And I'll tell you what, if I could communicate to my daughter in dreams and signs, and so, and maybe, yeah, but you maybe, can't. maybe even a, you can't. This, this is what makes that's what makes I, I God cannot, unique. But, but if I had the choice, I want to spend. I want to come to her directly. But the problem. I love her. I no, want to come. I don't want to give her dreams. But the problem. No, the problem with that is, is that in that example that you're giving, where you're trying to link it now with Jesus and God becoming manifest here, then you're, you have a problem. All the generations that came before. So you're gonna then say that God. God didn't love those earlier generations. He only loved the generations which came from Jesus' time and onward. When God became Jesus, became a man, and came amongst people, now He is loving and kind to the human race and to those coming after. But all those who came before, He was not. So this is this is this is this way. Now you put God in a position of being unfair. But no, I. You I, see, where where's the senses? <coughs> the point that where we are coming from, you see, everybody is equal. All it's the same for everybody. Everybody is born with that same consciousness. God reveals in everybody's psyche, in their dreams, their signs in their lives. Everybody has that sense of equality. We all can find God. But for you, you've made it very unique in the specific point in time and history, which then denies all of the other people who came, who didn't have the chance. All the people on this earth today who have never come across Christianity, who have never heard about Jesus, who have never heard. There are many, many people in different parts of the earth. So what? So God is not loving them also. So, but, but, but see, I agree somewhat with what you said before about this, this implanted thing we have. So we, we want to worship God. We want to love God. We have something in us that seeks God. We're spiritual beings. Spiritual being means somebody who seeks to worship. We want to worship. We know. And I believe that I think maybe you were saying something about this creation. I mean, you look at creation all around. Springtime is incredible. It's incredible. I just look at it. It's so beautiful. And it tells me about God. I, and if I'm in a certain country, you know, some place maybe where I've never been, I don't have a Bible. Sure, there's no Bible. There's, you know, no one has ever said anything about Christianity. But you know what? If I'm seeking, not everybody is seeking, but if I am, I will see it in the creation. Because God is in the creation. We can all agree. It's just amazing. Science, yeah. Science of God is yes. amazing. Sure. Gee, we can sure. Amazing. sure, but you see, the point is that he, in, in the system that you're following, you've already said that without accepting Jesus as your personal Savior, that you can never inherit the kingdom of God. So that person who has never had access to the Bible and to hear about, yeah, he can find God in the creation, etc. And then he, according to Islamic teachings, he becomes a Muslim. He becomes one of the worshippers of God. Whereas in your case, no, he is lost. And this is the universality. The religion of God is a universal religion. It is not restricted to a particular set of people who have only heard about this particular individual, etc. The universality of the religion of God, this is essential. And this is the justice and the, the, and the fairness of God and mankind and also an expression of His love. Do you understand? I'm, I, I don't know if you understand. Please correct me if I'm saying something you know already. But I'm just... Do you understand what, what Christians believe about what the church is? Maybe you don't know because sometimes there's misinformation. Christians... No, I'll, say, I'll say you're asking, right? Okay, I'll, you say, can, you can just, I'll yeah, say yeah. that it depends on what Christian you are. The Eastern Orthodox have one view. The Western have another. The uh, Protestants have one view. The Catholics have another. The uh, Seventh-day Adventists have another view. The born again have another. So when you're saying, what do Christians believe about the church? God knows, brother. You have to go and find out which Christian are you talking about. If you want to tell me about your Christian, your version, okay, tell me your version. But I'll bring somebody from this audience here, you know, who has another version of what the church is. Well, I mean, I just want to share with huh? you. Yeah, I'm sure you got. <laughs> Everybody, give us your version. We saw another version of Islam down here. Are you Christian what? I'm a Christian. Which Christian you are? Uh, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I, mean, I go to a Baptist church, but, but I'm which, not a Baptist. Which, which Baptist, church? Baptist, Protestant, Baptist. But, um, 
Do you believe in Christmas? Do you believe in Easter? Do you believe? These are Christian stuff. I mean, I believe Jesus. There's many divisions you can talk about in Islam. No, it's not Christmas.